Sir La Royale says, what inspired Turn Off the Lights? Man, it's the true story, what inspired Turn Off the Lights was a female told me something like that. Uh, I was about to get busy, and she was like, all right, I'll play. You're going to do this, you better do it good. If you don't, get your ass up out of here. Something to that effect. Mm. And I was at the swap meet, Compton swap meet, dropping off some records, and everything just started coming to me. Just started coming to me. It's like I got a bad feeling in my stomach or a good feeling in my stomach. I wrote the whole song, sitting in the park, Compton swap, sitting in the Compton swap meet in the parking lot. You know, those sleeves that you have on the record, you pull the 12-inch out, that white sleeve. I wrote, the, wrote everybody's part, sitting in the Compton swap meet, brought that back to the studio, and Dre, Dre was already had the beat. He was playing with the beat. And we started working on it. And they didn't want to do they didn't want to do the song. I had to bribe them to do the song. I, it's in my book. I had to pay them to do the song. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. So I had to write the whole song, bribe them to record it, and they left. They were like, fuck that song. They wanted to be gangsters. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Change the world. What's uh what's the history? I don't maybe you don't know this, but Hopefully you do. What's the history behind albums being released on Tuesdays back in the day? My boy trying okay. to come, uh, come. My boy trying to come on. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's your, I'm just looking. I'm looking for his, his people. He, he booked the show through his uh, through his uh, management manager team. or yeah. his uh, publicist. And he was forwarding the link. I told him, I said, I got a second show at uh, at six thirty. If he ain't here by then, I got to roll to something else. And I just got a text. From my second guest might be a tad bit late, so uh, I'm so glad you made me come on, man, and kick it for a minute. We won't be here no seven thirty. But my second guest, I got that one. You got to go. I got you. I appreciate you. Oh man, I want to sit in on that. Time. I yeah. want to sit in on that one though. That's the thing. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll make it work. We'll see if it works. But uh, yeah, what, what what's the history behind albums? Uh, being released on Tuesdays back in the days? Uh, Tuesday was like the first day of, because mu- record, mu- uh, I'm sorry, records w- would come out. You had to have a day to get them to the stores to, and get them to the radio. So Monday was music day at the record company. Tuesday was music day at the radio stations. And that's when everything actually hit the stores on Tuesday. So if, if, Tuesday, everything got geared up. We Monday, everything got geared up, and uh, some, some, sometimes if you was like a, a a big chain, you got your records at midnight on Monday, twelve oh one Monday. You could not, you better not put them on the shelf. You better not play them before twelve oh one Mon Tuesday morning. Okay, <laughs> that was the, that was the game. And officially, somebody that was everybody was looking for because people would get pissed. Because mm. back then, whoever had it was going to make the money the first two weeks, yep. maybe 10 days. And a lot of times, the, the big chain, like VI, not VIP, but uh, even bigger than VIP, um, Warehouse would have a discount. They discounted an extra 50 cent in the white neighborhoods. So if the brother, if the white folks wanted, if they would drop it, 12.01, they tell you, it comes out at 12.01 Tuesday morning. And everybody running, mm-hmm. there, niggas being live. That just that was, and then Monday morning, Tuesday morning, uh, was record day at the radio station, and everybody started playing their records on Tuesday. You go on the mm-hmm. radio station, any radio station, you see the same tracks, <laughs> different, different. I, I used to be a record promoter, and I would go out to KGLH, K Day, um, different stations. And you see the same guys right behind. Everybody got a second record under their arm. Mm. And trip out on this. I have a story behind that. Uh, I used to go to the Compton Swap Meet to buy a lot of my music back in the mid to late 90s, back when CDs were popping. And the Asian dude, you may know his name. I don't even know if it's the same one you used to do business with. But long story short, he would tell us, a select few, to come Monday just before they closed, just before the Swap Meet closed, to get the album early that came out Tuesday. I got E-40's album before anybody had it. And this is messed up because I burned it for like 10 people. This is back when you used to burn CDs for people. So... That's probably why they don't do that shit. <laughs> yeah. Especially when CDs came out. CD shit. The CD come out on Tuesday. Come out on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday night, the bootleggers had it. So mm-hmm. CDs, records were a little bit different. Because, you know, in the in the early times, bootlegging, the only thing you could really bootleg was 12 inches. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can only bootleg cassettes. Bootleg cassettes. 
and eight tracks. Those were the easiest things to bootleg in the beginning. Was the big ass eight tracks and the cassettes, because uh, anybody with a cassette player could pretty much do that. And they had they had eight track recorders also. I used to have one. Um, but when CDs came out, and although a CD burner was like twenty five hundred dollars, if you was a serious bootlegger, you had no money. Oh yeah, that wasn't money. That was nothing. That wasn't yeah. no money. That was nothing. Okay, you know, mm. shit. You make that back the weekend. Mm. We got some good questions, Burgers man. We got huh? some good questions. We have some good questions. So if our first guest doesn't show up, we got a show right here because we have some good questions in the uh, in the in the chat. Thank you guys so much for for chiming in. Uh, what made you guys? This is from DJ Wick. What made you guys decide to use New Birth as the basis of Turn Off the Lights? Uh, that was something Dre actually pulled. We we had been going through some different songs that 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 would allow us to get the same groove. Uh, something a little bit different than, than our lovers. Lovers was our big. People don't realize. People forgot about lovers before. Turn off the lights. That was our biggest record. That was our biggest. And I don't hear it on the radio or nothing like that. But lovers was our biggest record, and it got more radio play than any of our in, in, in the surgery juice or anything else. And um, when we came back to turn off the lights, it was like lovers had already paved the way for turn off the lights. And new birth was that that particular vibe. That baseline was so cold, we just jumped mm -hmm. on it and we were able to make it work. Mm -hmm. Classic song. Monty 1K. And before I give you this question, Lonzo, I want to remind you that sometimes people, the audience, hear things differently and they may think they heard something that they didn't. So, you know, we before you answer this, if you don't know, then maybe we'll check the video. But um, Monty 1K says, OG Lonzo, did you see? see DJ Yella on Vlad recently saying he didn't make money with the Wrecking Crew. I haven't watched that, that part. But yeah, I, saw, I is that, that. Oh, okay. I heard him say that. Okay. I heard him say that. Now, we didn't make a whole lot of money, but one thing I can say, they always got paid. How much money they kept, that's a different thing, okay? I can't control the man's spending habits, okay? Up until, up until about two years ago, I had a receipt book. I had Dre's signature, Cube's signature, Yellow's signature, Shakespeare's signature, and clientele's signature in this big ass receipt book. And I sold that receipt book to, um, what's the university in uh, New York? Uh, damn, um, damn, they have a hip hop library. And um, was, that's not Columbia. It's not Columbia. It's another one in New York. Um, they that, have a hip hop NYU, library. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not NYU. It's, so I think it started with a C. Uh, damn. Anyway, uh, ahead, I'll look it up. they were looking for some hip hop artifacts, and I personally put, I personally sold that um, receipt book because. I know if something happened to me, it don't look like much. It don't look like it has no significance whatsoever. And that receipt book shows where people were, it has, it has carbon copies of their names in it where they actually were paid. Now, again, if I give you the money, you set it on fire, throw it out the window, buy hookers, whatever you do with it, that's on you. But I know I gave you the money. Mm -hmm. We got our deal from CBS. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody got, everybody's cut was $13,000 uh, after everybody was paid. I got double, but they all got because I own the company. I had to I, I pay for production, but they all got thirteen thousand dollars before they could uh, before the money was even the check was even issued to me. They'd already hit me up to borrow money. They was all in my debt, and when the check got, got finally cleared the bank, I got my money back. Yes, see, people forget about small stuff like that. I had a buddy of mine. He he worked for me from time to time, and he man, uh, I'm, I need half to get started. Oh, right, here, here you go. And every other day, so he come to me, not these guys, but he come to me, hey, I need 100, I need 200. And at the end of the job, in his mind, he still got half coming. No, you didn't nickel and dime your way down to $150 from the 450 you were supposed to have originally. Because one, you're behind schedule, and two, you've been borrowing money all the time. So I'm trying to figure out how is it that you think you can borrow money and still get paid the full amount that you was due if you hadn't borrowed money? And that's the same thing happened with the fellas. Everybody had to have new chains. Oh, we got money coming. Let me hold. Let me hold five hundred. No problem. I had the money. 
No problem. Well, we got our CBS check, K. Okay? Uh, you owe me six thousand. You owe me three thousand. You owe me four thousand. Whatever. Give me my money. Okay. That if that if I'm wrong, check me. If I'm wrong, check me. So yeah, you may have gotten thirteen. You may have been entitled to thirteen thousand. But by the time you borrowed all that money, doing what you had to do, you had you know you didn't went through shit. Uh, for five thousand, you now you only got seven to eight thousand coming. Who fault is that? That's my fault. If I tell you, no, you can't have the money, you'd be mad at me. So, you know, people, pe people's perception is always different when it comes to certain shit. Mm. He didn't and make the money he made with uh, NWA. Huh? No, go ahead. Continue. I didn't hear no, you. He didn't make, he didn't, no, he didn't, make, he didn't make the kind of money he made with NWA. Wrecking Crew, I mean, we we leave here on a thir Thursday or Friday. We make eight to $10,000, maybe f sometimes fifteen. And shit, we, we they spent all week long. They spent spent their time spending the money. We got to go back on the road again. Then at some point in time, the gig stopped coming. And this is eighty fifteen thousand. That's say, a lot of eighty fifteen thousand. Take should take you yeah. a long way. No, no, no. I mean, as a group, we make eight to eight to fifteen thousand dollars on the weekend. And by the time I paid the air flight, air air flight uh, managers and shit, we might everybody might get a grand, five hundred to a grand, depending on what it was. It's four of us. Mm -hmm. It's four yeah. hours, okay? Mm -hmm. And I got all the bills. I'm paying, I, I got advanced. Sometimes I had to advance to, um, the um, air flights, the hotels, to the promoter reimburse me, but that was all a part of it. You know, had, it had to be deducted. I'm not paying for that shit and give you all full money. That don't make no sense. So that's the part when you when you when you playing. Oh, when you play in multiple roles, sometimes people can misconstrue. You know, shit get convoluted. When you play in, I'm a group leader, record company, and for a while I was a, I was manager, okay, because I didn't have a manager. Mm. So then I got I did get management. They want to get paid. They got twenty percent off the top. So we if we make fifteen thousand, three thousand is gone. Now we're down to twelve. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're down to twelve. And then I pay for the pay for the hotel, cab fare, uh, suitcase. I mean, uh, luggage. I mean, uh. We had to always had to bribe the goddamn um, the sky caps at the airport to put us put our equipment on the plane. That was 150, 200 East Bay. So that shit, you know, we had overhead expenses. Mm -hmm. That yeah. business died. Yeah, and and, and business. promoters, yeah, promoters and record executives like yourself, they get a bad rap. But what people don't see is the behind the scenes stuff that. They have to do. I mean, that they have to pay for. They're putting a lot of money up front, and not it's not a guarantee that it's going to come back. So I get that part. I always play devil's now, advocate when it comes to that. As a, as a promoter, I'm a promoter. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. That's what I've do, been doing. As a promoter, people can cut off oh, ten times, ten times three hundred. That's three grand. Ten times five, that's five grand. But you didn't go to. You wouldn't know where I was writing that check. The radio station. I paid exactly. the DJ. I paid the security mm -hmm. guard, the cashier, the cleanup man, the poster man. Everybody got their hand out before the event. And I got to pay taxes. Everybody got their hand out. Huh? And I got to pay taxes. <laughs> and I got to pay. Everybody got their hand out before I could open that door. I had to rent the room, pay the security guards, do all, pay the poster man, hang up the posters, do all this right here, hire a DJ or rent a system or have my system all up there. Ain't nobody working for you for free. Everybody that comes in contact with you, especially if you're a promoter, they got their hand out. So mm -hmm. if it costs you fifteen hundred to do a gig and you make five thousand, you still only made thirty five hundred, and you might not make that every time you do it. You got to take in consideration. Sometimes you're gonna lose. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Sometimes you're gonna lose, and guess what? Niggas don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. so you at the ATM that, pitching off your house note to make sure everybody get paid. Yeah, you're taking the most risk. And that's real talk. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. So, what, um, you know, all right, man, come on, dude. What, what percentage of acts on a record label does a record label have to go through that fail, fail, fail before one act just hits because from what I understand they're really relying on just one or two acts to really hit kind of like the movies you know you have one or two blockbusters a year but all the other movies you know barely barely break even 
Well, if you're a record company and you understand, if you understand how record companies go, the 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 sale from the record is just a tool to finance other investments. So based on your contract, it takes you six to nine months to get paid. So if you sell a couple hundred thousand records in, in a month's time, that's a few million dollars. The artist only gonna get out of a out of out of a hundred thousand records, uh, let's say a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand records. If you if your ass get after advance recouped, if you get another fifty hundred thousand dollars, you should feel blessed. It and it probably ain't gonna happen. Most of the time, we had it figured out. Uh, one time we had to figure out you had to sell $150,000 just to get back to zero. Get back to zero. Mm. $150,000 just to get to zero. That means you just recouped all your money that they gave you. Okay? Depending on your contract. Depending on your contract. Okay? Mm. You might have to go sell 150,000 records just to get to zero. And if they give you any additional promotional support, tour, uh, videos, all that gets stacked on top of the uh, on top of the advance. So, man, it, 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 but meanwhile, meanwhile, a hundred and fifty thousand records of them at ten dollars a piece. That's a million five. So they ain't losing no money. They only gave you a hundred thousand. They only gave you a hundred thousand. But it, it takes you a hundred fifty thousand dollars just to hundred fifty hundred fifty thousand units to get back to zero. Meanwhile, they didn't make a million dollars on you trying to get back to zero. So in the in the math in the Crazy. math of the game, million dollars and invested in some mutual funds for I don't know 60, 90 days, some some CDs, whatever the case may be. And if you do decide they do decide they owe you some money, they're gonna pay you from the interest and still gonna hold some money back in case some of the records that sold get returned, which I never understood how the fuck Records that sold get returned. Even in contracts mm -hmm. right to this day, there's a clause for returns. You can't return a digital file. There's still a clause in contracts for returns. There's still a clause in some contracts for free goods. How do you huh. give away a free stream? Wow, something that I already heard, and it was I, it, there's it's not tangible. It's not tangible, but they'll tell you we got we have so many records to give away free goods. Plus, in a in a in a hard in a hardcore contract for uh for for tangible products, CDs, uh, cassettes, albums, the um the uh contract allows the record company to give away ten percent free goods. So on a hundred thousand records. They can give away ten thousand and not pay you for them. Oh hell no! Nah. But in most cases, they get sold at the swap meet. Them ten thousand to get sold at the swap meet still make another hundred thousand that anybody got to pay you for. Mm. The game is mm. rigged. The game is rigged. Wow. The game is rigged, and and and, and you'll never hear. I ain't never heard an artist that was with a company after three years and how much, how much they love their record company. Mm -hmm, exactly. Ain't none of them. Michael Jackson, nope. Prince, all of them. Much money they made for their record company. You ain't never heard of an artist that loved their record company. Mm -hmm. Yep. They love when they first get signed because they treat them like kings. After that, it's a done deal. You just another another act. The more you say, yeah, we still love you. But you know, then you start reading your contract and you realize, oh shit. Mm. I'm a slave. Not Literally. Gay, no, not. Literally working for oh, nothing, Lonzo. Oh, 